For centuries, ballast water has been loaded in one port and discharged in another, often on the other side of the ocean. However, about 30 years ago, it began to emerge that it wasn't only water being ferried across the seas of the world. Various organisms were also being transported and released into new environments where they sometimes thrive with devastating consequences. Ballast water has also carried deadly human pathogens like typhoid and cholera, resulting in serious outbreaks of disease. It has also become clear that exchange in itself doesn't fully eliminate the risk of undesirable organisms being transferred. Only comprehensive treatment of ballast water can hope to achieve this. The Ballast Water Convention is actually going to make it mandatory for ships to have treatment systems on board to a specified standard which uh, scientists have agreed that, that will reduce the risk of invasive species. It'll work for all ships that are in international voyages that are over 400 gross tons and have more than 8 cubic meters of ballast. So, seafarers will rapidly need to become familiar with new systems and procedures for managing ballast water on board their vessels. A number of equipment manufacturers have developed such systems, which have then undergone testing procedures to ensure they can achieve the required standard. So, in the next few years, up to 60,000 ships may need to be fitted with ballast water treatment equipment. This is a very complex issue. And in terms of selecting the right and suitable equipment for a ship would only apply to the individual ship. It depends on the ship's size, the ship type, the ship's age, and the ship's trade. There are now many different systems that have gained type approval, but the majority comprise two stages of treatment, with a separation stage followed by disinfection, though some disinfection technologies are used without the need for separation first. Separation means removing the solid material, including larger organisms in the ballast water. The next stage is to disinfect the ballast water, either by a number of different chemical treatments or by a range of physical treatments. Physical methods include irradiation with ultraviolet light, ultrasound, cavitation, or deoxygenation to asphyxiate the organisms. Whichever system is installed, a high level of record keeping for ballast water management is mandatory to verify the system is operating correctly and ensure compliance with the new legislation. The shipping company and the master must ensure that a practicable ballast water management plan has been developed, one that's comprehensive and realistic in its operation. Crew training in the use and maintenance of these systems will also be a key issue in ensuring they continue to comply with the standards required. There is a challenging period ahead for shipping company management and crews as they get to grips with the new ballast water management systems and understand and implement the legal requirements. Meeting these challenges will ensure that ballast water can, in future, be handled safely and with fewer adverse effects on the environment.